All right, continuing our tour of all that amazing new stuff in the Spring Boot 4.0 and Spring Framework 7.0 release time frame, there is some really exciting news on the JMS front, which is a sentence I didn't think I'd ever utter in 2025. You know, I'm a big fan of messaging, and, and for a long time, I was a big fan of, of Java message service, JMS, and uh, I even have the O'Reilly JMS book signed by Dave Chappell, who wrote the, uh, the book, you know, 20, Plus I, I mean, I think it came out in the 90s, right? I, I was a big fan for a long time, and uh, he signed it, get the message. Get it, like a uh, messaging, it's a messaging, it's a messaging technology, you get it? It's, and never mind. anyway, it's um, a big fan. I like messaging. I just, I'm not a huge fan of, of JMS anymore because it's, when you do messaging, you know, if you've ever, ever read Gregor Holpe and Bob A. Wolf's book, Enterprise Integration Patterns, there's this nice discussion around different ways to integrate systems. And you've got RPC, you've got shared file systems, you've got shared databases, and you've got messaging. Different patterns for integrating different systems and the costs and benefits of each. And uh, I walked away from that thinking, well, it's good to know that these are options. Obviously, shared databases these days are a bit of an anti-pattern, in fact. But, but nonetheless, this doesn't feel like a great way, most of these don't feel like a great way to build a system today. And the one that gives them the most benefits, the most optionality, while simultaneously being the most elegant, is the messaging-centric approach, right? And that's often supported, it's brokered, if you will, thanks to uh, the message queues, likes of which include Apache Kafka these days, and RabbitMQ, and you know, those sorts of things. And JMS, you know, the whole point of messaging is to decouple two producers and consumers. And why do you want them decoupled? This isn't just good dogma in the computer science world. There's a reason for it. It's because the less coupling you have, the fewer conversations and synchronizations you need to arrange for and account for whenever you make changes to either side. That allows two different sides to move independently of the others, which reduces the costs of change because that cost is bore out by people having to communicate and to sort of expand upon possible repercussions for every little change. The less you have to do that, the faster you as an organization will go, the more money ultimately gets put in the pocket of your of your organization and hopefully in, in yours. And at the very least, there are fewer things for you to do in such a situation, right? There's less likelihood that you'll miss dinner, right? So it's, it's good to have less coupling. And so what are the things that you might have in an organization that uh, that couple. Well, you might have to be, a producer and a consumer might have to be in the same place at the same time. That's called temporal coupling, right? You might have to know about the same interface, right? So for example, an RPC service needs to know about the shape of the API that it's invoking, right? It's like knowing the uh, methods on another object in Java, but unlike in Java or other languages like Java, you have no compiler to help you stay on the straight and narrow. So you really end up having to do things like schema and all that, which gets complicated, right? So what you want is a consistent standardized interface there. You don't want to be coupled by time either. You don't need to, ideally, you shouldn't need to be there at the same time as the consumer, right? Just because I send a message doesn't mean that that so downstream service that is consuming that message needs to be working at the same time, right? So temporal and, uh, you know, a, a interface and uh, uh, locational, I guess you might, might, I guess you might say. So th these are different kinds of coupling. JMS gives you its temporal decoupling, right? You don't have to be there at the same time. It's, it's, it's that's it. <laughs> and list. Both producer and consumer need to agree on the same destination. You don't have that in lots of other technologies. Like I don't need to know about the consumer of a message that I send to an exchange in RabbitMQ. That's just not a thing. I can route that message sent to that exchange to any of the downstream queues in the broker. That, that indirection happens in the broker, not in my Java code. I don't need to upgrade the other side just because I decide to send this message to a different exchange. So you do have that coupling in Java message service. Uh, you also have, you know, you have to share the same Java API. Both sides need to speak JMS, which is, that's a standard-ish API. That's not the real big issue. The issue is that it's, it's not a network protocol. So you might actually end up in a situation where if you upgrade the broker, the clients, both producer and consumer, might need to upgrade as well. Flag day upgrades are anathema to good decoupling and messaging. It's not a network protocol, you're bound by API, and you have to agree on the same producer and consumer location, the same mailbox in effect. So it doesn't really give you as much optionality as maybe some of the other messaging technologies do. Now, is it better than just straight RPC and EJB? Yeah, yeah, heck of a lot better, right? Obviously, but, but that's a low bar. We know better now, we know what good looks like, and that's not it. So that said, if you're gonna do JMS, and uh, you know, a lot of people are, I mean, there's a lot of brokers that have JMS uh, bindings, 
If we're gonna do JMS, I can think of no more convenient a way to do it than through Spring's J JMS template, which is the thing that we introduced 20 plus odd years ago. And that has, it is, you know, it's revolutionary. That thing has made the work of interacting with JMS so, so concise, so nice, but it's still a template. And you might've noticed that of late, we've started to work in terms of these new clients. We've got the JDBC client, not just the JDBC template. We've got the REST client, not just the REST template, right? And these clients allow you to compose operations more granularly. You have a fluid DSL by which you can express a particular sort of confluence of parameters that ultimately will result in a call being made. You can build up a progressively more complex request by calling different methods on these clients. And so you can start simple and as you add more complexity, you scale linearly as opposed to the approach that we had with the templates where it was sort of all or nothing for some of the more nuanced or complex requests that you wanted to make. So they've done that, they've given that same treatment to the JMS template, okay? So we have the JMS client and the JMS template, by the way, really nice. I mean, I, I, I would dare say that some of the niceties that came from the new JMS 2.0 interface, well, I say new, but this is now, gosh, it must be closer to a decade than not. Um, some of the niceties that came from JMS 2.0 were, I think, inspired by the usability and quality of life improvements that came from the JMS template. And now here we got the JMS client, which again, ultimately is delegating to the JMS template, but it exposes a more granular SPI, right? So I'm a really big fan of this new thing. Let's just take a look at it in action. This will be a very, very short video. Let's take a look at it in action. I'll go here, I'm gonna create a new module called JMS. We're gonna use Docker Compose to create a instance. We're gonna use ActiveMQ, which will in turn bring in Spring Framework's uh, JMS support. We wanna make sure that we have the right version of Spring Framework, Spring Boot 4.0 and Spring Framework 7.0. We'll hit generate, open this up in the ID, and we'll create a component that is a runner. It'll run when the application starts up, so application runner, okay? And this in turn will inject our new friend, the JMS client, okay? And as far as I can tell, you don't even need to, there's no builder, you know, in some of the other clients, like the REST client, the, uh, J, uh, well, the REST client, I think is the, the big one. And there, the AI, the chat client in Spring AI, there's one there that requires a builder. So JMS dot destination, you pick a destination. I use the string convenience one. Let's create a, a shared destination. So Q will just be called messages. Okay, and let's say Q, nope, 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 Q, import that. And we're gonna send a message. Now, do I wanna send and receive and get a, you know, a response back synchronously, or do I just wanna send a value? And uh, you know, I'll send a value. So, you know, hello world, okay, good. Now, I wanna also then listen for a message. I can do that with a JMS template here. I can say receive, JMS client, JMS, that destination, and then receive. And that'll give me the next message that comes back from there. Next dot if present message system out message dot get the payload there we go got the message okay so that's worked now obviously i don't recommend you do dot receive that's probably not the best idea what you would normally do let's make this more clear in the roles here now again you'd you'd have two different services normally right you'd have two different modules one being a one being a producer and the other one a consumer and so here we'd have the consumer right and the consumer normally you wouldn't use the template or the client or the messaging template. Instead, you'd use the listener, right? So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna listen on that queue, void on message, string message. I'm gonna just ask for the payload directly. Got a message, okay. We'll put that there, there we go. And the destination is that. Okay, fantastic. So let's comment out this bit right over here. We don't need to receive anymore. So the producer will produce and the consumer, you guessed it, will consume. Got it, okay, so that's working as well. So this is the idiomatic way to work. Obviously this is a, I, I mean, I, I think this is pretty natural to understand. Use the, the JMS client, specify the destination, and then call one of the terminating sort of final methods here, you know, which we've got send, send, re send, receive. You can send with headers, right? Some brokers support delayed delivery, like I think Artemis does, which is also from Apache. I could be wrong, there's a lot of them. Okay, well anyway. That's that, this is the JMS client, really nice. If you're using JMS, this is a nice, huge quality of life improvement. Uh, and if you're not using JMS, okay, keep on trucking, later.